No, the point I'm making is that <clears throat> companies need to understand that everything they do in a company affects the prices they can set. Welcome, we are here at the podcast talking insights of SOMR in Chicago at the Art and Science of Innovation. We are enjoying a very nice conference focused on innovation here in Chicago. And it is my pleasure, so it is my pleasure to come with Pierre Showforce. I am Joaquin Brecha, the General of SOMR. And Pierre, please, can you introduce yourself? Yes, well, first of all, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, I'd love to, to um, see the, you know, there's sessions I've been to been really good. And uh, I think this is delivering a tremendous amount of value to, to not only to the audience that are here, but also to the audience who may be remote, right? Um, <coughs> yeah, my, <coughs> my name is Per Schofors. I'm Swedish from start, but I, I'm operating out of Los Angeles now. And, and, and I have this uh, moniker, the Price Whisper, and I have actually become uh, one of the world's leader, leading experts in how you price a product for higher sales volume, higher revenue, and higher um, profitability, right? And um, it's, it's a process that is based on um, pricing research, um, where we have developed our own way of doing that research. We developed um, our own AI to support the research, which is not customer facing, it's just used internally. And, and, and it's a process that works every time. Right. And before getting into this particular process, let's talk about your process of becoming the price whisperer. Oh. <laughs> how, how did you start? Because I, I understand you, understood, you started as a micro researcher. No, no, not at all. No, I, the, the story here is that um, I ran a company out of Zurich in Switzerland, uh, actually established and run, <clears throat> and I then ran a company out of, um, out of London. I came to the US to establish and run a division of a fairly large public company. Um, and I consequently had another four CEO jobs. Um, in all these instances, <clears throat> we did experiments with pricing. Um, it was something I was interested in and I, I knew that pricing per se affects um, business results more than anything else, right? And some of those experiments worked really very well meaning that next quarter revenues were up 25% or so, right? Um, others were complete duds. So when, <clears throat> when I set out on my own, I decided to develop a process uh, to make every pricing experiment a success. And that process <clears throat> is, is uh, based on uh, doing online research to a marketplace which is very important, it's not only customers, it's, it is uh, customers to a company, it is um, what we call strangers, which are people who never heard of the company, and it's some people who know about the company but haven't bought. So buyers, non-buyers, and strangers. And, <clears throat> and from that, with great accuracy, understanding what they're willing to pay for, and, and then consequently understand what drives that willingness to pay. What, <clears throat> excuse me, what marketing features, marketing uh, messages and channels drive a higher willingness to pay. Uh, what messages drives a higher willingness to buy. What product features or service features and functions um, drives a higher willingness to pay and a higher willingness to buy. What sales channels and sales methodologies drives a higher willingness to pay and a higher willingness to buy. Um, how all of this compare um, the various competitors in a market, right? Uh, so for example, how does NPS of five key competitors affect what customers are willing to pay? Um, and then of course, develop a pricing strategy that often is stratified in some way, but um, that <clears throat> minimize sales friction and maximize um, sales volume, revenue, and profits. So price is a very sensitive mm -hmm. variable mm -hmm. in the marketing mix. Who is 
who is your typical customer within a company? Is it marketing? Is it sales? Is it the CEO? Who is? It is how, the, how do you, how it, do you start? It is the CEO. It is the CEO. It is the CEO. <clears throat> we work primarily with mid-market companies. And it is the CEO because the CEO has often been tasked by the board to take the company to the next level. And <clears throat> we have oodles of examples of clients who followed our advice and doubled in size, quadrupled in size, and even more, right? Because when you price for profit the way we teach people how to price for profit, um, the company gets so much more resource for market development, for product development, um, even more money to hire better, more expensive people, right? So it elevates the company to the next level. It makes sense that the CEO has the holistic view of not only sales, but also profit. Yes. So, because if it would be maybe another layer of the company, they would just prioritize sales. And Correct. therefore, most likely promotions and <coughs> offers would be the daily option for, for to boost sales. But I guess this is not the point that you are mentioning. No, the point I'm making is that <coughs> companies need to understand that everything they do in a company affects the prices they can set, how they go to market, how they market, how they sell, how they um, differentiate or not from competition, um, how they um, how they um, how the the actual product meets the, the needs of of of, of the um, uh, of the market and so forth, and and it it's. <coughs> It becomes something that is really very complex, right? When you look at all the variables that affects what a company can price. And <clears throat> we developed AI software some 15 years ago that we use in, in, in my company to analyze all this information that we capture from the marketplace. But that, <clears throat> that AI creates a tremendous amount of data right? And data is not actionable. So um, for that reason, I also have real business people, not data analysts, not career consultants, but actually real business people who review all this data and, and, and from that um, develop actionable, practical recommendations. So jokingly, I'm saying that we have AI squared. We have artificial intelligence, but then we also have actual intelligence. Actual human <laughs> intelligence. So, yeah. so, so just to properly understand you, you analyze data from the marketplaces, yeah, we, but, but you also interact with what you said, buyers, non-buyers, and mm -hmm. potential buyers. And also, you are combining a holistic uh, reach of data. It's, huh? it's all about taking that holistic view. And, and there's, there's a lot of companies who do price testing, but that looks at price as would it live in a vacuum. And pricing does not live in a vacuum. And can I give you an example? Yeah, of course. Um, <clears throat> this company is a recent client. They, they have these dispensers for purified water that you find outside um, grocery stores um, I I here in the US, right? So people go there with an empty five-gallon jug and they fill it up and take home. Um, this company came to us and said, we tried to increase our prices seven years ago and it backfired badly. So we had to go back. Mm -hmm. and, <clears throat> and then they said, but now we need to increase our prices. And what we found was that with a different set of marketing messages, there were plenty of room to um, increase price. Uh, marketing messages that better conveyed a emotional value to their clients, right? Now, these companies, the, the marketing is the actual signage on these dispensers, right? So they changed the, the, the signs on the dispensers, they increased their marketing, increased their prices, and in one week, they went from a 200 to a $240 million company, right? By pricing research, right? 
Okay, so Per, um, you, I mean, you come from a very international context, no? yes, originally yeah, from much. Sweden, and you have been, as you mentioned, Switzerland, London, or UK, and now US. Yeah. Would you say that there are different approaches to price strategy uh, if, if you compare those countries you have been working with? Um, no, I, I know that there's a couple of things. Europeans in general are better in pricing, uh, pricing to value than U.S. companies. And, and that is because Europeans have smaller home markets. You have to be more precise, right, that when you price, when you have a smaller market. The U.S. have a huge home market, and, the, you know, winging it is often good enough, right? Um, and 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 that is that's not good for for, for Europe. Um, <clears throat> the the um, the the other thing is that um, if you go to the Far East, for example, um, the, the the certainly in China, there's only two ways of pricing, right? Either dirt cheap or really really premium. There's kind of no in between, right? Um, and so, so the, the it, I tell you my, my conversations with Chinese companies, but I'm trying to tell them that that you, you you're not a premium, but you shouldn't price dirt cheap because that sends a message of inferior quality. That's a message that just don't under, they don't understand it because in their culture nothing can be too cheap, <laughs> right? Whereas here in the in the Western world, we often, um, if we are being presented with something that we think is too cheap, we kind of hold it in our hands physically or metaphysically, and and, and we say, I kind of want to buy this, but at this price, it can't be any good, so I don't, right? That thought does not exist in China. So so we come, we come from I would say uh, a couple of decades in which price perception mm -hmm. has massively evolved due to internet, yeah. online, uh, low cost mm -hmm. uh, increase in many countries from retail to entertainment to, to um, flying and traveling and so on. And we come as well from some years in which uh, the Western world has got back to inflation that yeah. has been unknown from, <clears throat> from many, many years and decades. Yeah. Um, how have you lived these couple of last years in which inflation has impacted so many markets, so many categories, and also has has created a sense of uh, loss of perceptions in, to, in consumers? Uh, because now, uh, and in, indeed, if you if we see at uh, different categories, mm -hmm. and we see the the, in, the increasing price of of uh, the housing mm -hmm. or hotels, flights, mm -hmm. and so on, that has reshaped. Uh, our baskets. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, how have you lived from well, your perspective on these <coughs> changes? Lots of, lots of, especially consumer goods companies, has taken taken the 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 opportunity and the well known understanding of inflation to increase their prices more than what is necessary to cover of of, of inflation, and in some cases um, they've increased their prices so high over and above inflation that um, their their buyers are saying no i won't buy right and and you, here in the states you have the uh, the auto industry as an example right um, prices of, of cars have gone up with quite a lot i don't know exactly but <clears throat> during the inflation with maybe 35 percent right and and they now face this problem it, 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 with with very rapidly increasing re uh, inventory because fewer and fewer people are willing to spend um, you know thirty percent more today for 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 the same car they could get cheaper three years ago right so some of these companies have gone they've taken the opportunity a little too far yeah right. Yeah, and 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 they are going to suffer from it. Yeah. Now, having said all that, it is always easier to decrease price than to increase price, 
right? But it certainly affects uh, the image. The oh, absolutely, of the brand. absolutely uh, of so the brand. Yeah, absolutely. So it can, it can deposition you uh, from where you were before. Yeah, and and if I look at uh, you know some of some of the <coughs> some of the globally leading video video and audio streaming companies that that we worked with, right? Um, not recently, but when they started out, right? And 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 I see how they how poorly they do their price increases, right? They, 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 because if you do a price increase, it is, should always, always, always be a, an opportunity to remind your buyers, your subscribers, on all the value you're getting, right? We are, in, they should say, we are increasing um, our price because now we have another 10 million songs, right? Or we are increasing the price because now we have another 1,500 TV shows, right? No, they don't. They just send out messages from next month, your price is going to increase. So, so, so they miss that opportunity to, to, to deliver a value message together with the price increase. And therefore, they lose subscri more subscribers than they should. Um talking about price setting have you run your own medicine in you into your services absolutely absolutely yeah absolutely and, and have you found uh, a good a good response yes we have um uh, we we um <clears throat> we are pricing our services um to to fit the 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 uh, the information that we that we gathered in these pricing um uh, Pricing research projects we done on our services. Absolutely. Okay. And before closing this so interesting interview, I see here you have a book. I have. Uh, a book, can you yes. talk about this book? That I guess <clears throat> I think you are going to sign uh, this book. No, I'm not uh, going to sign books. Okay. So here, here, here's a little thing about value. You know, I'm all about delivering value and back that up with price, right? Okay. <clears throat> I often go to to these conferencing and networking sessions and stuff like that with a book, right? Because um, um, I want to promote the book, I want to promote myself. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and people say, can I have a copy? And I say, no. You need to buy it. You need to buy it because if I give it to you, there's no value, right? That's right. You know, That's right. It's going to end. You buy it, you're going to read it, you're going to get loads of information and loads of value on how to drive uh, not only pricing, but marketing and all that good stuff. But if you if you just get it as a freebie, it ends up on a shelf and you're never going to touch it. If it's signed, maybe it makes a difference. If it signs, yeah, maybe. If it maybe. makes a difference. Yeah. So. Per the Price Whisperer, it's mm -hmm. been a real pleasure. I hope you are enjoying this conference. Uh, we still have some more to go through. Yes. And, well, I look forward to, to following your your. Uh, development of your prize whisperer. Thank you so much, and I um, I'm excited about here uh, about being here, and and I hope I can bring value to to the audience and to the organization. I'm sure you you are yeah. doing that. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank Bert. you.